I feel like we had a very strong response earlier in the year. Um, I feel like closing schools was a, a very important measure. And for a long while, we were leaders in the nation in controlling the coronavirus outbreak. Now, obviously, school has started again, and we have seen our numbers go up drastically. And we've also moved into other phases of reopening. Um, I think this is a very difficult reality for a lot of people especially our essential workers. Um, if schools close, our essential workers will not have daycare for their children. And they're in very, very tough situations. Um, those essential wor workers are usually also the least paid. And I'm hoping one thing where you're going to understand now is that all labor is extremely valuable and needs to be paid a living wage. Um, and I feel like the, the response with where it is right now in Great Falls needs to be heightened we're reaching a crisis point and we need our leaders to take some decisive action to keep people safe and to keep people healthy. We've been able to stir up this kind of crazy fear that our elections are not secure. Mail voting is absolutely secure. Montana has always been great about offering absentee ballots. I am far more concerned that we're not making voting accessible and we're not making registering to vote accessible than I am about voter fraud. Voter fraud is a non-issue. Absolutely not. I think the Montana voters are extremely clear about this issue. I think it is one of our least partisan issues. Montanans don't want a sales tax and I would um, never see myself supporting any measure to impose a tax like that here. Absolutely, I am going to be voting yes on both of those ballot initiatives. And I think there are two reasons why it's extremely important. Recreational marijuana will be a major revenue source and the ways in which they plan to spend that money will benefit our state. Um, also extremely important is that it is a criminal and a social justice issue. Hush, thanks Juno, that's Juno. Um, it, is a, it is a criminal and a social justice issue. Um, we already know that marijuana prohibition, um, its entire history is racially motivated and having marijuana be illegal disproportionately harms people of color. And so not only do we need this because it will be a huge revenue boon for our state, we need this because it is ethically the right thing to do. It is ethically correct. And in addition to legalizing recreational marijuana, um, we need to be expunging records of marijuana offenders. Um, we absolutely should not be wasting prison dollars to have people with marijuana convictions in jail when we're literally having a conversation about it being safe enough to use recreationally. Um, so I will be supporting it for both of those reasons, but I think we have really framed the conversation around revenue and the criminal justice implications are just as important. I do support the Affordable Care Act as it stands now. Um, previously for my employment, I was a caseworker for the Office of Public Assistance and determining Medicaid eligibility was a big part of my job. Before the Affordable Care Act, we were leaving out so many people. Um, you know, sometimes we could give the kids coverage, but their parents would have nothing. And if we want healthy families, that means we have to have the adults covered and healthy too. Um, I don't think healthcare should be for profit. I think healthcare is a human right and I think um, I think the Affordable Care Act is a step in the right direction. Obviously, there is room for improvement. And um, with such a massive venture, we, we have to learn as we go and we have to be pre prepared to adapt. Um, but I think by and large, the Affordable Care Act has been vital for Montana. It provided over 90,000 Montanans um, with with health care that never had it before. And um, it, it's not perfect, but I absolutely support it. And I think we need to work to keep improving it. Um, besides the pandemic, which is obviously going to dominate the conversation right now, the other biggest issue in my district and in Great Falls is our crime rate. We have seen increasing crime rates um, for a while now, and it's, it's really becoming um, a huge problem in our city, especially property crimes. And the type of crime we're seeing is directly related to the crisis of drug addiction. 
Um, and so I think for House District 22 and all of Great Falls, we have to be improving access to mental health services. We have to be improving access to chemical dependency services. We have less than 30 inpatient beds in Great Falls, less than you know, 30 residential beds for about 60,000 people. And so if we don't solve the addiction crisis, which you know, poverty and mental health and other biopsychosocial factors are happens, it will not improve our crime rate. Fixing that will fix the overburdening of our foster care system. It will significantly contribute to eliminating child abuse and neglect. Um, and all of those are interconnected. Um, we have to have a basic quality of life for every person in our community. Um, and without that, we won't fix our drug addiction. We won't fix our crime rate. Um, so we really have to attack it at, at that very basic level. And I think House District 22 has been just as affected by drug addiction and crime as every other district in Great Falls. It's become an epidemic. I think that I am a wonderful option for this district because this is my neighborhood. Um, this is where I grew up. The woman that I'm running against has held this seat for two terms and the last election, it came down to 14 votes. So that tells me that the voters in my district are already looking for change and already looking for improvement. Um, often we find with politics that there's only one type of person that runs and that's someone who is independently wealthy um, and someone that has those resources to get into this kind of endeavor. And that's really not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be average people representing all the other average people in their neighborhood. Um, I've lived here my whole life. I live in a double wide trailer next to a bunch of other people that live in trailers because that's most of what HD 22 is. We're one of the lowest income districts in the city. And I think that there is immense value in having someone making your laws that is living the same struggle you are. Um, your perspective is entirely different if you've ever been living paycheck to paycheck or you've ever been unable to afford your medication, or if you've ever had to use food stamps or Medicaid. Um, and that was you know, a huge part of my life growing up. We relied on the social safety net um, because we had a family member with cancer. And so if you, if you don't have those experiences to draw on, it's very easy to confuse wealth with integrity or wealth with character. Um, and I think House District 22 is full of hardworking families that have not been able to get ahead because the people making their laws are living entirely different lives and they don't have the connection to what real life middle class and lower income families deal with day to day.